If surviving assassination attempts were an Olympic event, I would win the gold medal. Fidel Castro Did you know that Fidel Castro survived 634 attempts on his life? Well, this incredibly huge number is according to his former Secret Service chief. It is quite astonishing that one person alone was able to survive so many attempts made on his life, despite even the CIA being one of such plotters. Besides the CIA, various other groups inclusive of Cuban exiles made relentless attempts on Castro's life, but these groups will not match the creativity employed by the CIA. The attempts on Castro's life were anything but ordinary, with methods ranging from poison pills to legendary exploding cigars. How did Castro survive these numerous attempts on his life? This is a story filled with intrigue, danger, and the audacity of his enemies. Stay with us as we uncover the secrets behind Castro's incredible ability of outwitting his adversaries and emerging unscathed repeatedly. If you did not already know, Fidel Castro was the leader of Cuba from 1959 until 2008 when he retired. During his time in power, he faced constant resistance from many sides, including the US government and Cuban exiles who wanted to topple his government. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union had strong ideological differences and fought through third parties. Cuba, only 90 miles from the coast of Florida, became a place with much political trouble. A little backstory. In 1959, the Cuban Revolution overthrew the US-backed tyrant Fulgencio Batista, led by Fidel Castro. This caused tensions between Cuba and the US. Here are ways by which the CIA tried to kill Castro, and lucky ways in which he escaped. The Poison Cigar the use of poison cigars was one of the first attempts made on his life. This was reported to have been orchestrated by the CIA. The plan involved tainting Castro's beloved cigars with a deadly toxin, hoping that just one puff would be enough to take him down. However, these cigars were never delivered to Castro, but were instead sent to an unidentified person, whose fate remains unknown to this day. Whether this was an error or simply one of the steps of a plan that failed to properly materialize, Castro's life was spared. Exploding Seashells Another of such bizarre plots to take down Fidel Castro involved a seashell bomb that was expected to detonate when Castro came in contact with it. The plan was like something out of a spy book. Castro loved to dive, so he often swam around Cuba. The plan was incredulous. Put an explosive device inside a seashell and then make the seashell so attractive, Castro will be too drawn to it to simply let it be, but his contact with it will end him. Judging by how ridiculous the plan was, it was never carried out. The Fatal Milkshake Castro's love for milkshakes made for an easy avenue for his assassination plots. In a planned move, an enemy spy tried to poison his favorite drink so that just one sip would kill him. This has been considered as one of the closest attempts on Castro's life, as it almost came to fruition before fate struck. As the story goes, the CIA got the idea from two mobsters who had declining profits from their Havana-based casinos when Castro rose to power. These mobsters, Salvatore Giancana and Santos Traficant, were provided with pills laced with botulinum toxin. After several attempts, they were able to get within close proximity to Castro at the Havana Libre Hotel. Everything was going according to plan until it was time to poison Castro's milkshake. However, the pills which had been placed in a refrigerator had gotten frozen and stuff. Attempts to pry them off ruptured the capsules and foiled this assassination attempt. Marita Lorenz in an astonishing twist of fate, the CIA hit the jackpot by recruiting Marita Lorenz, one of Castro's former girlfriends. With unparalleled access to Castro's inner circle, Marita appeared to be the ultimate asset. The CIA wasted no time in training her in the use of cyanide tablets, a lethal weapon that could end Castro's life within seconds. Marita returned to Cuba and rekindled her relationship with Castro, spending a night at his home. However, her plans took an unexpected turn when she discovered that the tablets had dissolved in a jar of cold cream, rendering them useless. Overwhelmed by a crisis of conscience, or perhaps fearful of Castro's suspicions, Marita confessed the plot to him. Astonishingly, Castro's rage was not directed at Marita, but at the United States. In a chilling display, he handed her a 45 pistol, challenging her to take his life, but she couldn't bring herself to do it. 
Marita spent the night with Castro, only to leave the next morning, never to return again. The Hemingway Setup After Hemingway's death, his widow, knowing of the CIA efforts to kill Castro, suggested a plan to use their beloved farm as a base for his assassination. Castro, a devoted fan of Hemingway's writing, appeared to have made pilgrimages to this holy site, with curiously few security precautions in place. Seeing this vulnerability, Hemingway's widow believed this would be an opportunity to take out Castro. The CIA, ever watchful and coldly calculated, gave the idea careful consideration. However, the risky plan was abandoned despite its prospective benefits. As no official explanation was ever given, it is reasonable to assume that the CIA, as astute as they were, foresaw the possible firestorm that would envelop them if they used the home of one of the most celebrated novelists of the 20th century as the backdrop for a secret killing. Panama Bombing Plot Another serious murder attempt on Castro occurred while he was traveling overseas, and the CIA worked with Cuban exiles to hatch the plan. In 2000, just before Castro was about to give a speech in Panama, an assassin attempted to kill him by planting 90 kilograms of explosives under the podium. However, the bombs were found by Castro's security detail before he arrived. After this attempt, Castro claimed, If surviving assassination attempts were an Olympic event, I would win the gold medal. The Tuberculosis Diving Suit Another early try rode on the fact that Castro enjoyed scuba diving so much. The CIA planned to kill Castro over a long period of time by infecting a diving suit with tuberculosis. However, the infected wetsuit did not make it to Castro, as he found out about the plot thanks to a leak. The Bay of Pigs Perhaps America's most outright show of displeasure in Castro's government, the Bay of Pigs invasion was a carefully planned action by the United States to eliminate Castro and his government, and put in place a new one. It was done by a trained group of Cuban exiles with help from the American troops. The plan was to sneak up on Castro and his allies and kill them quickly. But the assault faced big problems right from the start. Castro's leadership was a big part of how the Cuban people united to protect their revolution. Moreover, the US had underestimated the capabilities of the Cuban forces. The Cuban people, on the other hand, were united behind their leader and their desire to protect their freedom. They saw the invasion as an attack on their freedom, so they came together to defend their movement. This resistance took the invaders by surprise, and they had a hard time getting a foothold. The Bay of Pigs invasion quickly went wrong for American allies who tried to escape. Ultimately, the plan failed, a huge win for Castro and his regime. Castro's ability to stop the invasion at the Bay of Pigs was a turning point in his ability to lead. It helped him keep his position, made him more popular, and showed how strong the Cuban Revolution was. The failed attack symbolized Cuba's refusal to let outsiders interfere with their country. Castro's ability to remain in power for so long can be largely attributed to the strict security measures he put in place. These measures were designed to protect him from potential threats and ensure he could maintain control over the country. While his regime is usually criticized for its authoritarian tendencies, there is no denying that they were effective in helping him to maintain his grip on power for as long as he did. In 2008, after facing multiple sanctions and assassination attempts from home and abroad, Castro decided to pass on the reins of power to his younger brother, Raul Castro. In 2016, Castro died aged 90, outliving most of the people that wanted him dead. Aside from all of the assassination attempts, the CIA sought to embarrass Castro, one of which ways was the use of a chemical which had effects like the well-known drug LSD. The plan was to spray the chemical into the room where Fidel Castro would use his radio station to talk to people. The goal was for the drug to make him lose his cool and talk in a strange way while he was on air. This time, it was not really to kill him, but to make him lose his political reverence. Yet again, the plan failed.